Welcome everyone. Today's topic of discussion is uh, resource planning. Um, in uh, real projects, we can have constraints about um, human resources, materials, and equipments. So uh, it will be necessary to classify uh, scheduling problems uh, under two categories of time uh, constraint projects and resource constraint projects. As you can see in the red graph, uh, we have a time constraint projects uh, with uh, fluctuations uh, in resource demands. Uh, in the bottom graph, um, we have uh, uh, done uh, resource smoothing uh, to make management of resources more feasible. Resource constraint projects um, have uh, a hard limitation on uh, the availability of resources in this particular example you can see in the bottom graph that our um, hard threshold uh, for resource availability is five uh, units uh, and uh, to meet that um, requirement uh, we need to extend the project duration from 20 days um, or time units in the original projects to 23. We will be looking at different um, examples in here is an example uh, for a landscaping uh, project. As you can see, there is only one uh, resource required for uh, the project, uh, which is uh, uh, backhoe. There are different um, activities shown on the Gantt chart uh, with um, arrows demonstrating uh, relationships between the project's activities. We have uh, an increased uh, demand for uh, backhoes uh, uh, between periods uh, 4 to 10, uh, where uh, four um, machines are uh, required in uh, that period of time. You can see this uh, in the middle uh, graph in here. Looking at the relationships uh, between uh, project activities, we can see uh, there is one activity, fence and walls, uh, uh, which has only one successor, which is uh, planting. Uh, to reduce the demand uh, for backholes uh, in the peak period, we can move uh, fence and wall uh, activities to a later uh, date because it has uh, some slack and it has only one uh, successor. It doesn't uh, result in a delay of project completion. In the bottom uh, graph, you can see the smooth uh, number of backhoes uh, required for different uh, periods. Smoothing uh, uh, resource demand can have uh, several advantages, um, uh, including uh, reducing the peak demand for uh, resources and uh, also the number of uh, uh, resources required over the life um, of the project. Also, fluctuations are uh, minimized uh, as a result of smoothing and uh, uh, the process of seizing and uh, releasing resources uh, for equipment and also hiring and firing uh, human resources uh, will be minimized. Resource constrained uh, projects, on the other hand, um, are complex problems to solve. Um, uh, very often uh, heuristics are used uh, for solving such uh, complex problems. Uh, there is a rule of thumb that um, most of heuristic methods used for um, research resource constrained uh, projects and uh, this is uh, prioritizing uh, activities in terms of uh, resource provision uh, when uh, the slack or um, the leeway for the uh, activity is minimal. Also, we give uh, priority in terms of uh, resource uh, provision to a smaller uh, duration activities. And the third rule of thumb is that we don't uh, move activities which have already been started. Here is an example that we can uh, apply the three priority rules on. Uh, you can see uh, 
year is a small project with seven activities and uh, completion date um, for this activity is 12 days you can have the GAN chart uh, uh, for the project activities um, uh, with the resource requirements um, marked uh, on each bar and uh, this is a very good visual um, aid uh, for resource leveling available uh, number of resources for this project um, uh, will be a maximum of three and it has been um, uh, illustrated in the bottom row of this table for the first two periods um, of time we don't have any problem because the only uh, activity uh, which is uh, being completed is activity A with two uh, resources required. In the third period of time, however, uh, the sum of required resources are five and uh, we should decide which activity uh, to move. Uh, activity B and D have slacks. Um, however, because the maximum available uh, number of resources is three, moving activity D doesn't help. So the only option that we have following the priority rule is uh, moving activity B. For the third period, the slack is reduced from two days to one because the early start date is delayed and now we start activity B at day uh, three. So uh, we can solve uh, the resource uh, leveling problem in the third period. The same uh, for the fourth uh, period uh, can be done because uh, we have uh, one remaining day of slack and uh, no delay in uh, uh, project completion is caused. However, in the fifth uh, time period, um, uh, we need to further delay uh, the start of activity B to meet uh, the maximum number of available resources of three. Uh, this uh, will uh, delay the project completion time. Uh, you can see that activities C and D already have been started. That's why they are in red color and we cannot move them anymore based on the third priority rule. The color coding here is only to uh, clarify the third rule and um, uh, you can ignore if it causes uh, confusion. Having a look um, at um, project network, we can see that uh, why project completion date is uh, delayed because um, of the prerequisites for activity G. Now um, we can uh, move um, activity G to uh, have an early start date of 11 and the slack is uh, reduced to a negative number of 1. The sixth time period, again, the only option is to move activity B and it further delays the completion of the project to 14 days and now the slack uh, for both activity B and G are negative 2. So revisiting um, uh, priority rules, uh, we can decide on the next move and uh, for solving uh, the resource leveling problem in the seventh period of this project, uh, we can see that um, required uh, number of resources uh, is four and we need to reduce it to uh, three. The only activity with the slack is E and uh, based on the priority rule, we will uh, move this um, um, activity and delay the earlier start date to seven. A slack is reduced to one with no delay for um, uh, project uh, completion yet. For uh, the eighth uh, period, uh, the slack of activity E is reduced to zero. And uh, again, uh, we can see uh, no delay in the completion date for the project. Activity F has been um, illustrated in red color showing that um, already being started and cannot be moved uh, anymore. 
Now we need to uh, decide on the next move. For uh, period 9, uh, we only have option to further delay activity E and the slack uh, becomes negative 1 um, because activity G is um, not starting until the 13th period, no delay for project completion in this period. Same uh, for the 10th uh, uh, period of time. We further delay early start of activity E and now uh, the slack for this activity becomes negative 2 and um, activity G can uh, maintain the early start at uh, the uh, 13th uh, period. This is uh, the final status of the project with um, completion uh, uh, date um, of 14 time units and uh, we have managed to maintain uh, the resource um, availability threshold of 3 for the whole uh, uh, period of the project life. So to recap, uh, we classified the uh, scheduling problems into two categories of time constraint projects and the resource constraint projects. Uh, smoothing uh, resourcing uh, demand is a uh, comparatively easy uh, problem to solve because we don't want to delay um, project completion. For uh, resource leveling, uh, we have a hard uh, constraint on uh, availability of resources and as a result we need to use priority rules uh, to extend the project duration and meet uh, the available uh, threshold for resources. Thank you for uh, your attention and I look forward to having uh, uh, future discussions.